India's Operation Sindur and Israel's Operation Rising Lion demonstrated the freedom of action an air arm has once the enemy's air defenses have been destroyed. But operating in such a sanitized environment is a luxury and not the norm, especially when a nation fights a peer or a near peer in advanced combat systems. In India's context, the Air Force currently does not have the capability and hence the ability to operate using its fighters and other assets with the same type of impunity as the Israelis had over the skies of Iran. One of the primary reasons for this is the lack of a fifth generation fighter in the Indian Air Force. The Indian Air Force was one of the first air forces to acquire the first generation fighters, the Vampire one of the first to acquire a second-generation fighter, the MiG-21, and also an early adopter of the third generation of fighters in the form of the MiG-23 family, and then once again in the front of the line when it came to fourth-generation fighters such as the MiG-29 and the Mirage 2000s. But now, in an increasingly uncertain geopolitical situation, almost 20 years after the introduction of the first fifth-generation fighter, India is still perhaps a decade away from this generation of fighters. So, fifth generation fighter aircraft are needed uh, in today's uh, combat uh, scenarios because uh, the air defense is becoming very pronounced and uh, can cause heavy attrition as we've seen in the Russia-Ukraine war as well as uh, uh, you know the conflict in Gaza. Uh, so. Uh, and we saw what happened when uh, Iran lost most of their air defenses, the kind of impunity with which the Israeli uh, uh, Air Force could attack them. Uh, so it's imperative that you have something that has stealth, that can penetrate and uh, neutralize some of these air defenses uh, before uh, you, uh, you know, get on to your uh, major task of uh, degrading the uh, enemy's forces and uh, for that you do require a fifth generation aircraft which will uh, penetrate and be able to deliver weapons with uh, accuracy. India is now looking at inducting these fighters not before 2035. Worse, the Pakistanis are likely to acquire the Chinese J-35 fighter aircraft in the next few years. This would provide both of India's hostile major neighbors with an edge. Even if things do pan out, which they seldom do, the Indian fifth generation platform, the Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft or AMCA will perhaps take a few more years to be fully operationalized in the Indian Air Force. So I think uh, indigenous platforms in any case is the way to go whether it is fifth generation or otherwise. Um, uh, we've seen the kind of uh, problems uh, that are uh, there in case uh, of uh, foreign platforms, the supply chain issues during uh, conflicts, uh, the global uh, interdependence that used to be there in the past, the so-called globalization is now actually falling apart. So there is deglobalization and uh, uh, supply chains are now getting disaggregated. And then when they get disaggregated, you find that uh, they cannot, uh, it's difficult to maintain the continuity. So unless and until the host nation is also operating that uh, aircraft, uh, it's difficult to maintain it. You see what has happened to our Jaguar fleet, for example. Um, no other country in the world operates Jaguars, only we do. And uh, we find it difficult uh, at times to get the necessary uh, uh, logistics support. So in a, in a very high stakes platform or a very high uh, level platform, uh, to depend on another country for supply chain issues, I think, especially in periods of conflict, uh, is going to be difficult. And these supply chains, even if we go for them, we will find that uh, some of these are uh, can be interdicted, you know, uh, uh, during operations, and that could cause a severe uh, dent on our combat ability. This leaves a major capability gap. Although both the US and Russia have offered the F-35 and Sukhoi 57 platforms to us. But so far India has decided to take the indigenous route. Although there are reports that India may purchase one of these two fighters to fulfill urgent operational needs. 
as the strategic contours of the Indian subcontinent have changed due to recent and ongoing events, India may soon be at a disadvantage without an active fifth generation platform in its fleet. The IAF is in the best case scenario 8 years from acquiring a fifth generation fighter aircraft and may have to look at alternatives. So um, bo both come, both are capable fighters. Uh, the Su-57 is now combat proven, so is the F-35. Uh, so the point is that both are capable fighters, both are uh, fifth generation fighters, but they come with their own baggages. So if we look at the Su-57, uh, its stealth characteristics are probably not as uh, desired in the current uh, combat scenario. Um, we must understand that we operate with peer competitors and most of the other uh, uh, fifth generation fighters have been operating with non-peer competitors and uh, therefore uh, we cannot truly translate the results of those on uh, uh, into our context. So um, I think that the uh, Su-57 comes with uh, less stealth than we would like uh, to operate in our uh, scenario and uh, uh, if we co-produce it, again our indigenous uh, effort will go back even further. As far as the F-35 is concerned, uh, it's hugely expensive. Uh, it also has supply chain issues. The production rates are not, uh, haven't, uh, the delivery schedules have been delayed significantly for all partners in the F-35 program. So even if we sign up for it now, uh, I don't know if we, uh, if the US government A will part with uh, uh, high technology aircraft to us, B, um, how long will it take and C, with what kind of restrictions it will come. And even if we get it, at the end of it, we have to operate it. So it's hugely expensive to acquire and even more expensive to maintain. So in our context where we have limited defense budget, we have to prioritize what we can do and we, what we cannot do. So it's a dilemma for the government, uh, but at no stage should we abandon our indigenous fifth generation program because that is the one that we will be able to do in numbers, maintain the supply chain and make it combat effective uh, in future scenarios. But should India start working on sixth generation technologies and close any future gaps? So in my view, we should uh, definitely look at sixth generation fighter aircraft because there's been a large gap uh, in the uh, between the development of the fourth and fifth generation aircraft and uh, we need to catch up. Uh, I think we will not be able to uh, develop uh, or uh, devote enough resources to so many fighter programs and uh, uh, therefore collaboration seems to be a good way to go. Uh, we'll have to look at the details of what collaboration is being offered, what kind of technology development is being uh, partnered by us and what's our share in it and uh, perhaps looking at the pros and cons and the amount of resources, both financial, technical and industrial that we can bring to the table, I think collaboration at this stage seems to be a better way to go. True that India will add sixth generation tech to AMCA Mark II, but work should begin on a dedicated sixth generation platform. Both China and the US sixth generation fighter platforms have been flying. The makers, of the Global Combat Air Program of the UK, Italy and Japan and the Future Combat Air System of France, Germany and Spain have invited India to join their 6th generation fighter development initiatives. The American and Chinese platforms of this generation are expected to become operational in the 2030s. India too should begin work with a partner to acquire and co-develop some of these technologies while at the same time leverage its growing aviation manufacturing industry to produce these next generation fighter aircraft within the country, both for itself and for the world. The opportunity will not only keep the country abreast of the latest in all aspects of aviation technology, but will also help India master different facets of aviation technology, especially engine technology. Both Safran and Rolls-Royce are set to be offering India variable cycle engine technology. This is the latest in jet engine tech and even seasoned manufacturers 
are still working to mature their designs. By working on the latest in aviation technology, India can become an aviation giant of the future. India is currently looking to boost the number of its fighter squadrons and is looking at fourth generation fighters. But these fighter purchases too are quite expensive. Although in the short term, India could focus on a relatively cheaper 4.5 generation aircraft such as Saab's Gripen. This aircraft is equipped with weapons similar to the ones used on the Rafale and variants of the aircraft are powered by GE engines similar to the ones India is either already using or will use in its stages programs.